Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about cryptocurrency news and we're going to look at accounts with one Bitcoin are on the increase. And what does that mean and how does that affect you and I? We're going to look at is this Bitcoin's time to shine? It's looking pretty good. And gold faces problems. With the coronavirus, it's making it difficult and in some cases impossible <coughs> to transport gold around the world. And the result is, is it's creating quite a number of problems. So let's get into it. Bitcoin trading for beginners. These are ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that, that like button. It helps us tremendously. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. So the number of addresses with one Bitcoin is rising while Bitcoin is leaving exchanges. Kind of interesting. After a crypto market crash in March, the number of wallets with at least one Bitcoin has kept rising, reaching a new all-time high. At the same time, it seems that this coin is leaving exchanges. Crypto market researcher Glassnode said that on March 29th, more than two weeks after the crash, the number of addresses with at least one whole Bitcoin reached yet another all-time high of 797,632 addresses. And this seems to be a relatively stable trend. As just one day before, it hit an all-time high as well, reaching 797,580. To put it in perspective, this is 52 more wallets in a day reaching that coveted whole coiner status. So you can kind of see in this chart this has been an upward trend since, two, since prior to 2012. The number of addresses holding one Bitcoin or more has been on a dramatic rise. And really overall what that indicates is that people are beginning to hoard or hold on to uh, Bitcoin. So they'll purchase it and then they store it and hang on to it for a longer period of time. Um, and so I think that's actually a good thing for the overall Bitcoin market. It shows that people are actually using Bitcoin and cryptocurrency as a store of value um, because it shows more and more individuals getting involved and getting involved with a fairly, you know, uh, in some cases, significant amount of money. Uh, Bitcoin is currently trading right in the $6,000 range, but it wasn't that long ago that it was at the $10,000 range. And so just in my opinion, it's a good sign that a larger and larger number of people have a decent or in some cases, depending on the individual, significant investment in Bitcoin, in cryptocurrency, and they don't seem to be selling it off. Meanwhile, despite the volatility, Bitcoin holders appear to withdrawing their funds from exchanges, says Glassnode, adding that the overall that the outflow has been increasing daily since March 18. According to our labs, BTC exchange balances are the lowest they've been in approximately eight months. And so this chart shows how much Bitcoin has been stored at um, Oh, it's the exchange balance. I thought the first time I looked at it, I glanced really briefly and I thought it was Binance. But no, this is the exchange balance. And you can see that the exchange balances of Bitcoin has been dropping while the price has also dropped some, but it's on the, on the rise. Anyway, the thing that that, that that indicates is that people are no longer keeping their cryptocurrency on an exchange but rather they're taking possession, they're taking ownership of their own cryptocurrency by moving it off of the exchange and into a wallet that they own and control. And that's always a good sign. You know, there was a, there's a saying out there, not your keys, not your coin. And what they mean by that is if your cryptocurrency is stored on, a, on an exchange, Technically, it's not your cryptocurrency. It's the exchange's cryptocurrency. And it's not yours until you move it into your own personal wallet. 
And there are several different reasons why that's very important to do, but most of it has to do with your own security and your own privacy. Uh, the, the reason why I say that is if you have your cryptocurrency out there on an exchange and somebody happens to get your password, it's far easier for them to get your password and steal your cryptocurrency or uh, fraudulently obtain your cryptocurrency from an exchange than it is if you have it in your own wallet or especially if you have a hardware wallet. A hardware wallet makes it uh, virtually impossible for somebody to take uh, take your cryptocurrency unless they have access and knowledge about your PIN codes, uh, unless they have physical access to your hardware wallet and knowledge about the PIN codes required to access the hardware wallet. And so the hardware wallet definitely gives you a greater level of privacy and security. Um, plus the hardware wallet, if you're if your computer, your laptop, or your phone, whatever you're storing your wallet on, if that goes bad, say the hard drive goes uh, belly up or the phone gets stolen or whatever, if you had your cryptocurrency in a hardware wallet, um, then you can easily, uh, the hardware wallet is a more permanent device, sometimes lasting longer than your laptop would because it has no moving parts inside of it, while a laptop on a hard drive has moving parts. Um, with the exception, of course, of an SSD drive. Or on the flip side, if the hardware wallet was lost or destroyed, as long as you kept a record of those 24 privacy words, then you can actually buy a new version of that kind of, that whatever that wallet was, and reset it up so that you still have access to your cryptocurrency. Whereas on a laptop, if the hard drive goes bad, you may have completely lost your coins unless you maintained the paper backups that, that they tend to give you, or in some cases they do give you the same 24 words, and then it's up to you to maintain those words. Anyway, I got deeper into all of that than I intended to. Bottom line, people are taking their cryptocurrency off of the exchanges and they're self-custodying them, rather than relying on the exchange to custody their cryptocurrency. And that is always a good thing. So, why this might be the time for Bitcoin to shine. Uh, with central bank money printing machines switched back on, might Bitcoin be the star of the recession? But what about Bitcoin? Today that correlation is still in effect, the correlation between Bitcoin and other assets. As both equities and cryptos rise together, but as we have seen in Bitcoin's recent price movements, that is loosening. Bitcoin is beginning to differentiate itself from the stock market and from other equities and assets. Indeed, excuse me, it could be argued that Bitcoin is in a stronger position than gold. Crypto followers will be aware that the Fed's reprise of quantum easing takes us back to where it all began for Bitcoin. Bitcoin began in 2008 because of the stock market crash. In fact, uh, on the very, very first block that was created with Bitcoin, uh, that block contains a URL address and the full copy of an article about the, um, uh, the 2008 crash, the 2008 recession, um, and the article talks about how the banks were going, were no longer solvent and all of the different issues that were happening back in 2008. And so it was because of this bank problem in 2008 that Bitcoin was created uh, in order to give people a safer place to store their, their value. And it looks like we may be getting back into the same or similar situation. In short, the return of money printing machines, but on an even bigger scale, has the potential to truly make this the time for Bitcoin to shine. Bitcoin's limited supply stands in stark contrast to the central bank monetary policy. Add to that the halving and block rewards coming in May, and the assets censorship resistant becomes a big plus. Now, censorship resistance, I thought the best explanation I've heard of that, and the one that really clicked with me as to why it's important. Censorship resistance means that if the men with guns come to you and tell, uh, tell you to give you their Bitcoin, you have a way to protect it and, and a way uh, 
to prevent your wealth from being your wealth and your treasure from being taken away from you. It's a it's a lot more difficult for them to get your Bitcoin than it is for them to seize your bank accounts. Um, and so Bitcoin has a, a large degree of censorship resistance, especially if you do not keep your cryptocurrency on an exchange. If it's on an exchange, then yeah, the government can come take it just like the government can come take any money out of a bank account or any other situation. But if you have your cryptocurrency on a hardware wallet, then they need that hardware wallet in order to uh, uh, confiscate it. So uh, Bitcoin adds a large degree of censorship resistance uh, to your income, your wa your savings, um, it's better than keeping it under a mattress because if they invade the house and they look under the mattress, boom, there it is. Um, but because even if they find your, if you've stored it on a hardware wallet, even, even if they find the hardware wallet, they still need your um, keys or your, um, uh, your, your login. It's actually a set of numbers. It's either uh, somewhere around four to eight or 12 digits uh, in order to access the, crypt the hardware wallet. And it depends on the hardware wallet itself. So that provides you a bit of censorship resistance. Now, to put that in plain English, Bitcoin could act as a hedge against inflation. And so while the, the dollar with all of this, I mean, we're already talking about $6 trillion through quantitative easing. In other words, the Federal Reserve is printing $6 trillion and injecting that into the economy while we had a $2 trillion stimulus bill. So at the moment, we're looking at around $8 trillion being pushed into the economy. <coughs> um, that may not be, that may be just the beginning. And if it really is, then, then we will definitely see a significant devaluing or inflation on the US dollar. So another, a few more quotes I thought were quite interesting. Chambers continued, now we are in new dynamic. The quantitative easing everything everywhere moved by central banks to flood the world with cheap loans to keep the world from going bust in the new quarantine dystopia now investors are worried about inflation and Bitcoin and gold are rallying accordingly. This theme will run and run. But Chambers cautions that is the coronavirus is cautions that it is the coronavirus that dominates everything. In the background, the happening is fast approaching, which is generating some updraft. But that is nothing compared to the rolling saga of the coronavirus, which will drive all markets until further notice. And so, I don't know what to tell you, but it is going to be an interesting next few months. That's for certain. Gold faces a physical, very physical problem, Bitcoin to the rescue. So, Bitcoin's competitor, gold, found itself in a peculiar uh, position, situation due to the current pandemic. It's getting increasingly difficult for it to move. Fears of standard bullion led to London spot gold prices dropping far below U.S. gold market. There's plenty of gold, but it's not mobile. It's immobilized. While U.S. Federal Reserve promised unlimited stimulus on Monday, uh, resulting in the jump in gold prices, there's still the issue of locked down countries, closed refineries, air travel restrictions, and shut down airports, and nobody to work on transferring the gold bullion where it's needed. What's more, many dealers are worried to even try spending, sending a shipment as it may potentially get stranded, says the Los Angeles Times. And at the same time, the COVID-19 related anxieties are leading people to gold as a safe haven. A question is raised, is there enough gold in New York City to deliver against future contracts traded on the CME group-operated commodity exchange, better known as COMEX. In other words, people are buying gold, but they may not be able to deliver it to them on the time schedule they've promised. So that could be a very unique drama. I'm going to leave our, the links to all these articles in case you want to read the parts I didn't discuss in this video. In the meantime, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts? 
Do you disagree with anything I said? I'm interested in hearing your polite disagreements because I might be able to learn something from you. In the meantime, like, subscribe, and hodl, and I hope that you have a fantastic day.